The New Forest is famous for its ponies and tourists. But it's also a diverse and hard-working community. Living off the land according to ancient laws dating back 900 years. A rare glimpse of life in the New Forest, tonight at 7 on Meridian. In 10 minutes, Wish You Were Here checks out the Miami club scene and visits Cambodia and Benidorm. First on Meridian, Country Ways. The River Ouse drifts down through Sussex from Ashdown Forest, where its waters were once used by the early iron smelters. Divides in two the old town of Lewis, and after cutting through the South Downs, emerges into the English Channel at New Haven. This is calm and placid countryside, and the stretch of the river between Lewis and the sea is dotted with quiet Sussex villages and fertile, productive farmland. There are still strong, old-fashioned people hereabouts and good old-fashioned pubs, giving the lie to that fine man of Sussex, Hilaire Belloc's great fear, when he wrote, From the towns, all inns have been driven, from the villages most. Change your hearts or you will lose your inns and you will deserve to have lost them. But when you have lost your inns, drown your empty selves, for you will have lost the last of England. Happily, good pubs and inns survive in the Ouse Valley. Fred Mooland from Shepherd's Cottages at Eiford is in his 80s and has spent his life as a farm worker. He's still a keen gardener and enjoys the company of his golden pheasant, Tommy, and of his donkeys, Jenny and Bambi, which he sometimes uses to do the heavy work. I started off as a cowman at the age of eight. I had to get up, mouth and milk in the mornings during the 1914-18 war. Then after that, I took to horses and I was driving horses for three different people. My father, I used to do a lot of colt breaking. I used to break in colts for a bloke named Billy Wadey and George Barlow. My father used to get the work out of them and I used to get three pounds for breaking each one in. And that was when I was only picking up five shillings a week. Tommy, 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 come on, Tommy. When I'm on my own, I can talk to him, and he'd talk to me. Come on, come on. But he's shy. Come on, come on. Good boy, good boy. He's like me. Boy. I'm shy where the ladies are, and he's shy where anybody good is. Boy. Good boy, Tommy. Come on, pretty boy. He's a very pretty spectacular boy. bird, though. Mm -hmm. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, he was an egg when I had him Tommy. first. Tommy. What's this Guinness Book of Records pumping? I'm there, trying to beat it. Whether I will or not, I don't know. Yes, yeah, so over 100 weight each, I should think, by the one I had before. I got one in a wheelbarrow in a photo I can show you, and that weighed 115 pounds. 
And how about the weather at the moment? Is this rain going to put a bit of weight on your pumpkins? I hope so, because they absorb a lot through the leaf as well as through the root. Too wet today, it's best when they can walk easy, their old feet sunk in, they've got small ones, you see. And being so wet, that's why I use the little arrow instead of the big one, because when they put the extra pressure on, they went right down as deep as it was ploughed. Can you get donkey harness? Yes, but it costs you a thousand pounds to well, harness each one. Where'd yours come from then? I made it. Out of what? Yo, know, scrap. A pair of cord trousers and binder twine and uh, sawbag. Frank Sillett has been horse mad all his life. He first rode a pony at Bertram Mill Circus when he was five, and he has spent a lifetime working with horses as a rider, groom, huntsman, and stud owner. Keep your legs together, your knees together. Today, he still teaches people to ride and drive. I love teaching people to drive, and this is it. Children take a little bit longer sometimes, although sometimes they're a little bit quicker than growing up. But I don't mind which I do. Hold on, Fred. Hold on. Hold on. Fred. Fred was... Um, I took him as a debt, actually, when he was 18 months old. He used to belong to a hotel, and he used to get out. So what the chap used to say, now look, he was a manager, he said, Frank, could I have Fred down at my yard for a holiday? So I had him for a fortnight, three weeks. And in the end, the chap said, well, keep him there, and that's it, and I'll pay you. So we broke him and got him going and that, and then the chap didn't pay. So I said, all right, the pony's mine, and I've had him ever since, and he's now 19 year old. And he's so good with kids. He couldn't be a better pony than well, that sort of thing. Rain in each hand, and you're safe then. OK, tell him to go. Popcorn, Fred, popcorn. Come on. Who does the teaching, you or the pony? Both, I think, really. I do the teaching, and the hardest thing of teaching children or grown-ups is getting their hands right. And it does take, sometimes it takes a long time. Some people are thick and some people pick it up very quickly. Just on, Fred. Come on, just on. Just on, Fred. When he can, he takes his 80-year-old Phaeton out through the Sussex lanes with his 12-year-old Welsh cobs, Luke and Duke. How long have you been working with horses? I've been earning my living with him since I was 14. At one time, I used to drive... I lived in Romford when I started working with them, in Essex. And I worked for a greengrocer, and I used to drive a hackney thing on a flat trolley cart for a greengrocer up to Stratford Market. And you'd get in the tram, and the back wheels used to... The horses used to pull the back front wheels out, but... Then you just pull the back ones out and you'd be skidding alongside. You'd look round your side, you see the cart right out there and the horses over there. 